There you are. I think she is. Hey. Good. So we're all here. How old are you? 15? Uh, 22. Oh, okay. You look 15. Okay. Well, you're, you're in Mississippi? Uh, yes, sir. Which part? Uh, the Gulf Coast. Down by Biloxi? Yes, sir. Oh, I got friends from there. Okay. Wow, we made it, huh? Dwayne was from Biloxi. Uh, oh, one, of the guys, one of the guys I've done some music videos and produced some of his songs was from Biloxi. That's neat. Yeah. Check out, when you get a chance, check out uh, Dwayne Ward. He's got three three or four music videos that I did for him on uh, my YouTube channel. So you might get a kick out of that with the green screen and everything. Go ahead, Chuck. She got dark now. Oh, All right. that better. There we go. Yeah, that's good right there. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Go ahead, Chuck. Okay. Uh, we're going to start this. Yeah. Hi, my name is Chuck Kennan. I'm president and CEO of Big Fish Music and Big Fish Music Publishing Group. We've been in the music industry for many years. Uh, we license and publish music. Uh, we do recording projects. We have a huge catalog of original music online, over 3,000 songs. And uh, we market music. And I'm a member of the Recording Academy and a publisher member of BMI and ASCAP and a legacy member of NAM which is the largest music trade show in the world. And uh, here we are today speaking to uh, Adrian. Uh, Adrian is graduating college in December and she wants to pursue a career in tour management. And uh, I think her credentials at this point are very good. And so we're gonna talk to her and see what her needs are and how we can help her and uh, she also is an ambassador for the Recording Academy, which is another good credit. And uh, so, and Daryl here, Daryl is an engineer, producer. He just built a studio, Pro Tools Studio. And by the way, uh, uh, in talking with Adrian, she has a certificate in Pro Tools and she's done some sound and she's worked at the console but her greatest passion is being in tour management, which uh, which is a good area. I think there's a lot of opportunities in that. So let me turn it over to Daryl for a minute. He might want to ask you a few things since he's, uh, you know, he's well-versed in music. So am I. So together we'll uh, see what your needs are and what your goals and objectives are and try and help you to pursue a career in music. Uh, yeah, this is a second studio that we've had. We had one in uh, Hollywood for 15 years, and then we moved out to Prescott, Arizona uh, last year. Uh, and uh, so we built a studio out here. It's been up since about June or so, but we're working with some of the largest bands in the city right now. and. Uh, we're also doing some green screen stuff. Um, you said you, where did you study Pro Tools at? Uh, at my college, Delta State University. Okay, and you said, what kind of console did you work on? So, um, I've worked with, I don't know the name of the one I'm currently on. Um, I think it's like the Genesis or something like that. So it's a control surface, it's not like an analog console? It's, I don't think it is. So okay, those are nice. Uh, you know the old. I, I learned on a Neve eighty eighty eight, which is one of those huge old, you know, consoles that you see in the old uh, the old recording studio stuff. And I worked with uh, Gary Black, who was with uh, Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons and the Monkees, and he was a uh, recording engineer for them. So uh, learned on the old type of equipment. And we have a nice Pro Tools studio here. Um, 
so have you recorded anybody on your own? Do you have the equipment to do that? Or are you just mainly interested in the, the touring aspect? So for my class, we're actually required to record talent. So um, like my last project I worked on last Monday, I had to record vocals, guitar, bass, drums, and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And what kind of interface do you have? Or is that all at school on the, on the console? It's all at school on the console. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's all good stuff. And, and uh, yeah, it takes a while to learn, especially the mixing and mastering is a is an animal of its own. It's, it's very, uh, it's a whole lot different than just recording. Uh, I'm sure you'll find out. Um, so why do you want to be a touring uh, manager? So I've always wanted to go into the music industry since probably my first ever concert at like 13. Mm -hmm. And I never really knew what I wanted to do till I got into school and my past internship over the summer, I was able to run live sound and everything, but I got to do some load in and load out being a stage hand at the Coliseum down here. And it just really sparked my interest in how that world works and everything. So I wanted to go into touring management. Now, you know, touring management is, um, a lot, it's a lot of accounting. It's a lot of scheduling. It's a lot of, uh, PR publicity, you know, it's all that kind of thing. I have a good friend that's a touring manager in Nashville and he's worked with some of the, the largest acts out there. And, uh, it is a lot of traveling also, uh, and it's uh, and it's keeping your artists in in line. You know that's part of it also. So, have you taken any courses that might help along those lines as far as scheduling and? Uh, so accounting? we did some. We have to take accounting as like a basic um, general ed. Right. But we have taken like concert promotion and touring kind of classes to help us with that. Um, I did artist management, so it also talks about booking and helping promote that artist too. So great. Now, I will tell you that in the music business in general, but especially in touring, a lot of it is who you know and the relationships you have with the people that you know you, that you reach out to, and developing those relationships, uh, making sure that uh, they're happy, making sure that you're your artists are where they're supposed to be and doing what they're supposed to be doing and getting them out in a timely manner and back on the bus and all that kind of thing. So, so that's a large part of it. I, I wish you well on that. Um, do you have any questions on the recording end of it or on the, uh, the technical aspects of, of, of the music business? No, sir. Yeah. Now Chuck is a music publisher. His job is to help, you know, get the songs to different outlets for for uh, production, for broadcast, all that kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, that that also as a tour manager, you're going to be dealing with uh, contracts. You're going to be dealing with people that uh, that want to sign your artist or or that kind of thing. So you have to kind of be aware of of the business in all aspects. Have you read Donald Passman's book? Uh, I, yes, sir. I do believe I did. And that is kind of the Bible for the music industry. I, it's, uh, it's a good reference manual, if nothing else, but it sure gives you all the aspects. So I certainly recommend that. Um, Chuck, why don't you tell me about the publishing end and how you would deal with uh, any, any live musicians or people that yes. might be coming through town? I've worked with uh, a lot of artists in, in recording projects and, uh, and I did, uh, we did uh, uh, a lot of shows with with different artists at the um, Starlight, at the Hollywood Bowl, at the Long Beach Auditorium, at the Forum, worked with a, a lot of different groups. Something I was going to mention to you, Adrian, uh, you might look at uh, a publication called The Music Connection. It's a very good publication. It's very informative. And if you go on to musicconnection.com, you can look up industry contacts and uh, look under management, managers and booking and agents. 
because there really isn't a category for tour managers, but those would help you. And my suggestion to you would be contact these companies for an internship after you graduate. And you can tell them some of your credits. I mean, you're pursuing a career in tour management. You have a good background in music with your Pro Tools and your, you said you worked with a, an indie label in Mississippi and you did a little sound mixing. Um, so at my college, there's this record label practicum class. So it's run all by students for the record label, but yes, I have worked with them. Um, yeah. Well, you know, you know, in, in tour management, in doing a lot of concerts in my career, we've done a lot of Doobie Brothers, uh, Ike and Tina Turner, uh, Black Sabbath, uh, a lot of a lot of groups we had done, and we did a lot of live recordings on groups for albums. And uh, uh, a suggestion is these credits that you have. I would look up the management tour management and tell them that you're graduating and you're looking for an internship program with them and you can give them your background i would definitely do that and also what i found in tour management in in recording live concerts you know there's a lot to it uh, uh, an artist or a group when they do a concert and they go on the road I mean, you're talking about tour manager, uh, personal manager, uh, the tour bus, and then doing the concerts. You have the sound reinforcement. You have uh, uh, recording. You have uh, uh, the promoter, uh, radio promotion. And those concerts take an awful lot. You take like Taylor Swift, you couldn't imagine the cost of doing her tour. She's gonna, they say she's gonna make a billion dollars, but look at all the people behind the scenes that are doing all the work. And that's a lot of work. And Daryl's right, you know, bookkeeping, uh, scheduling, uh, a lot of things in tour management. I mean, the success of an artist or a group going on tour, I mean, that's how they make their living. They make a living performing live, but it's the people in their group uh, of people that work with them. Each one does something special in each case, and they make it happen. And so you might see the artists uh, performing to a big crowd of people, but look at all the people in the background. I mean, the tour management is an important aspect in the industry because they make their living and their concerts, you know, promoters want it to be successful because it's all about revenue and it's all about getting exposure. And on artists doing tours, they work hard, they're on the road, uh, they do their concerts, uh, they sell their t-shirts and caps and whatever, and you take it all together and it is a whole big thing in management and having the right kind of management and people that are dedicated to doing that in the interest of the artist, which is the whole thing, uh, it's very important. I know a lot of artists and groups that did tours for a long time. You know, some of them 360 days a year, they're on the road. And uh, it's a hard life. It's very productive because when artists start out, they look for a record deal. And the record deal is to launch a career. And that's one big song or the album that they put out. That's a launching thing. Because what they really want to do is they want to perform to their fans. That's where they, what they really want to do. The, the record thing is in the beginning. But you look at a lot of the groups and artists from the past, they're all going on tour. They're not making records anymore. They want to perform to their fans, and they make a good living at it.
And you take the Eagles, they're in their 70s. They could sell off 50,000, but it takes a whole team of tour management to put it together and make it happen. That's have have you worked with any local bands? Uh, yes, yeah, sir, I have. Um, over the summer, whenever I did my internship at Ground Zero, which is a local blues club, I did get to work with some local bands. And in what capacity? Um, it would just be like their Wednesday through Sunday shows, pretty much running live sound for them. So you'd run sound. Anything else? Uh, no, sir. All right. So, so, um, what kind of sound system did they have? Uh, or how many piece band was it? Was it a, a large sound system? Was it just a small club? What was it? Uh, it was more of a small sound system because we would have anywhere from solos to duos to full bands and instances where we had 10 plus people on the stage. Okay, because with touring, you're also going to have to have a knowledge of, basic knowledge at least, of, of sound reinforcement of, you know, if, if, if something's not right with the sound, you're going to be able to have to tell the sound person, hey, I need less reverb, I need more this, I need more that. So it is an important part of it that you have a little knowledge, at least in sound reinforcement, uh, if, especially if a mic doesn't work, kind of an idea on what might be the problem if a mic's not working or something's not working. So my suggestion is that you do work with some bands out there and not just a club. The club's fine. Running sounds out of a club is fine. But you actually need to kind of work with some of the local bands out there and maybe maybe do a little personal management, you know, for the band to help book a couple of local shows for them. See what's involved booking small tours locally. That will get you towards working the, the larger shows. Yes, you're going to have to intern at some point, but you're going to need that base of working with local bands, booking uh, local area shows, you know, Tri-Cities, uh, county type of things, especially working with festivals like county festivals, state festivals, if you can start booking bands you're working with into some of those things, that will get you the reputation, that will get you the basis you need to get with larger and larger uh, people and outfits that might get you to where you want to go. And you know, another thing too, uh, what's very important in doing the concerts is miking setting the mics and what we would do on groups that we recorded, we would go the night before when they were rehearsing and watch maybe one or two songs and make a schematics of the miking so that the next day or the next evening when we did a concert there, everything was all in place and, and we wouldn't have to go through a whole ordeal. So we did that, and uh, I found another thing, too. Uh, I'll name three groups that I had the fortunate experience to work with was Neil Young's Harvest album. It was up on his ranch for 11 days. Uh, worked with Peter Frampton, who had the largest selling album of all time uh, up in San Francisco. And... Uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix, the last album he did before he uh, before he passed away, and it was called Hendrix in the West. But we made sure that the day before, we had everything all set up, checked the mics, checked the sound system, everything. Very important. All these things are all the ingredients to make something successful. And everybody that's part of a team, it's a team effort. Uh, and you have to have that because you want you want the concert to be successful. You want the artist to be successful and you want the company you work for or the people that are in the tour management and all the pieces they put together to do it. You want it to all work in harmony and come out good. Success is very important. Success is very, very important. You mentioned to me that uh, you're with a group of people that are interested in music. 
are they too interested in your career or are they seeking a career in music also? Are they so they want to, so they do want to go into the music industry, but each group of friends that I have are completely different. One person wants to be a singer songwriter. I have one that wants to be a music publicist, and one is kind of like he's more interested in the theater side. So they're all different things. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to mention something else. We do publishing. Uh, that means the placement of songs and music for recording projects and artists, TV, film, uh, videos, all kinds of things. Like we're working hard now on uh, pitching music for films. And that's a very important area because songwriters, if they're both a songwriter and a singer or an artist, They're looking for a career. And a very important ingredient is songs. And they start with demos, but you want to do high quality, really developed demos because it's very important. You know, it's it's a career. And companies that invest in artists, uh, they take a big risk because they're they're signing them because they believe in them. And they're going to do everything possible, put together a whole team to make that artist successful. And uh, that's a very important thing. And so you have to have you have to have something that they want. And a lot of songwriters or singer songwriters, they write songs, but it's very important to work with people that can help you but do the right things for the songs to make them work. You can't just write. There's 45 million songwriters in the United States, and they tell me that 90% of them fail. And why? Because they think they have the greatest song in the world. And they think, well, if I can get my song, well, you know what? You have to really have a deep passion. Like you, I know it sounded like when I talked to you the other day, that you have a deep passion for wanting to be in tour management. You want a career in the music industry. And when you're done, and you should really look into internship. And I would go to these artist management companies, even the even the labels, and say, look, I'm graduating college. Uh, I want to go into tour management. Can you recommend someone or do you have an internship program? And you can utilize the credits that you have to let them know that I have a background in in different areas of music. And the more you learn, the better, whether it's miking or sound reinforcement or recording or pitching songs or uh, the needs of an artist or what it takes to make a successful tour. All those things are important, but I would sure bring that up to those people and say, uh, this is my background. And uh, even bring up, you were an ambassador for the Recording Academy. I think that's a great credit. I'm a, what they call a professional voting member executive. And, uh, but, uh, and they do a lot of nice things for me. And they can help you in a, in a lot of different areas. And uh, I don't know if you, in your pursuit of tour management, if you're thinking of joining an organization like the Recording Academy. They, they, they do that once a year. You fill out an application and uh, they select, I think it's June or July, and the committee approves who they want to be uh, a new member. And it's a very useful organization. I think they have over 20 or 25,000 members now. It's a lot of members, but they've been around a long time and there's a lot of benefits in doing that. And I would let whatever companies you go to, uh, to seek internship or 
you're going to be graduating and you want to, you know, you're looking for a entry position and you want to pursue that and let them know things like, hey, I, you know, I, I was an ambassador for the Recording Academy. I had a little experience in uh, working on music and that. And uh, uh, singers and songwriters, you know, they all they all want a career in some way. They want to place their music or they want to get some kind of deal. And uh, depending on what they want, but it's hard work and there has to be a deep passion for what you want to do, what anybody wants to do in music. And there's a lot, a lot of areas in music that people can fit in. It's wherever their passion lies, that's what they should do. And if that's what you want to do, do it. But you can learn all the other things. And the more knowledge you gain, the more valuable you're going to be, and you'll climb up the ladder. Do you have any questions for Daryl or myself? No, sir. Okay. Well, I hope we've given you some information that can help you. And I will tell you, generally, 90, 95% of the cases, people that are in the music industry started at their local level, got with local people, and built from there. And, uh, for example, myself, I used to go, I had a friend that used to take me to the old Palomino Club, which probably doesn't mean anything to you, but back in the, back in the day, that was a huge nightclub in California where all the top acts went. Over time, I became a talent judge for their weekly talent competition. And through those contacts, I became involved with Country Music Association, Country Music Association, California Country Music Association, and worked my way up through that over a number of years until I became president of the organization and vice president of a national organization. So you work your way up through your relationships and, and as your knowledge grows, you know, you get to the state national level and that's where you're going to get the national groups or the, the big touring groups. Uh, you know, so, so again, I do want to emphasize if you can work with local bands or your friends that are, that are studying to be recording artists, you know, you can help book them. You can help with some of their scheduling. You can start getting the knowledge now to, before it gets to a point where it's a massive thing, you learn while it's still manageable and, and you, as you go along, it will get easier and easier for you. But that would be my encouragement is really try to start at the local level and, and build from there. Uh, another thing, a lot of executives, most of them, presidents and executives of major music companies, they all climbed out of the same gutter, you call it, and climbed up the ladder. And they were in, everything is based on sales and service. And they all started in sales, moved up the ladder and became presidents of companies. And I have a motto that I share with people. I was told this by a comedian years ago. The people at the top or the people that you think are at the top, if they didn't tell you that they didn't climb out of the same gutter, so to speak, that you did, they're full of it because they all started somewhere. Just like artists, songwriters and that, you start somewhere and you get better at what you do by, by learning and experiencing it. And even, even starting with small clubs and, and new groups that are trying to pursue something. It all helps because you gain knowledge and experience, and it's very important in pursuing a successful career in music. And people have done it. I mean, there's so much music out there. There's so many people going on tour now. Wow, they're, they're, you know, music is, is alive and well, and it's always gonna be that way. And it's great that there's all genres of music. And in your case, you pick the kind, maybe it would help to pick an artist that does music that you appreciate the most and see if you can't get an intern position in that company, but definitely let them know what you've done now 
and you're graduating and you want to do something in music and you want to do it as soon as you graduate. And that's going to, you know, that would be my advice. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, make sure you reach out to Chuck if uh, if you have any questions or or you want any uh, you know you know Chuck's good at talking, so he'll he'll definitely give you any uh, any advice that can help. But check out that music um, music connection and look up artist management management companies. Uh, they've got all the back issues. You can you can see them and look under management and find some companies get a whole list of them and upon graduate let them know you're going to graduate and tell them hey i want to get involved in that and i'm sure you'll find one or more that would take you on provided you have a passion for that and i know you do i know you do daryl does a lot of uh uh works with a lot of unknown new and upcoming artists and songwriters he's also doing a lot of sound for movies now he wasn't doing that in the past but he's doing that so he's building on a lot of different things and he works very close with us because we review songs and music and we allow people artists songwriters to submit their material to our company and we review it and we tell them what's wrong, what it needs, if it needs that. And we help to educate them just like Daryl does. He has a great knowledge of recording and engineering and producing. And he's getting better and better and better because he's doing more things now. But you need those relationships and those kind of people to move you up the ladder. And I I got a good feeling that you're gonna do well. Thank you. Anything else, Daryl? No, that's it. Good luck to you and uh, let us know if we can help you in any way. Oh, and one okay. other thing, I guess they, uh, the Recording Academy, the Grammy U said to me that uh, they would like more than one session with a one-on-one. A -on -one. Is that okay with you, Daryl? Yeah, that's fine. They, they'd like to do several of them, but I think they told me this one is for the National uh, Recording Academy. So uh, a lot of people will get to see this. So smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Take care, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and end this. Okay. It's good meeting you. You too. Okay.